Hey bookish babes and welcome to my book nook. Those that are new around here, my name's Rainy. I'm an elementary music teacher, middle school musical theater teacher, also booktuber by day. I have a very eclectic choice of reads. I don't love reading just one category or genre of books. I love reading all sorts of books. The only one that I'm not really too big into is like really, really heavy fantasy, but I'm getting better towards that, and sci-fi. Other than that, I don't really read anything else. So if you're interested in hearing my wonderful eclectic book reads, then make sure to like, subscribe. All the things. Okay, in today's video, we are going to be talking about my April wrap up, all the books that I read in April. And I always start these by sharing my stats. And then I just go into my books from the worst one all the way up to the best. And that's how we're going to do it again this time. I want to apologize at the moment if you hear TV in the background. My son is eating breakfast and watching an episode of his favorite show so that I can film this because I should be done by the time this episode is over if I play my cards right. So, uh, we'll see how this goes. But yeah, we're just going to talk about stats first, all the stuff I read, and see what I liked, what I didn't, all that good stuff. Okay, so of course, I'm going to put some bar graphs up on the screen so that you can see a better what my stats are, but I am also going to read uh, off my little stats paper so I don't forget anything. So, we're going to start with, I read 11 books this month, so it's my second highest month. In January, I read 12. I did DNF a book, so it would have, like, if you count in total, it's 12, but I only read 11. I also read, for page count, it was 2,987, which is my lowest so far, but not by much. I only read, like, 3,000-something um, the month before. It's due to having a lot of shorter reads, which you'll hear about in just a second, but I am up to... 44 books this year in total that I have read and my average page a day is if you divide all that it's 100 pages a day which is not too bad I like that number um I've listened to 11 hours of audio this month so it was one of the lower ones I just didn't get the chance to read a lot of these on audio because most of the a lot of them were new releases and so like the audiobooks were like on hold for forever there was only two that I happened to get the audio for that I was like let's rock and roll with it you know as far as how I read them I read two with mixed media meaning that I had the physical book and the audiobook I read six physically I read two just as audiobooks and I read one just as an ebook and the types of books I read I read four novellas so shorter books one graphic novel and six novels and out of those books, the genres that I read were six romance, I was very romance heavy this month, one horror, three thriller, and one fantasy. So that's all that I happened to get to for this month. Then as far as uh, the ratings for all of them go, this was a pretty good month. I had five five stars, one 4.5 star, three four stars, one 3.5 star, and one three star, and then one DNF. So I didn't even have any two stars or one stars. Oh, however, there's one that I ranked 3.5 that I'm kind of debating whether I want to just push it down because after, I mean, I really enjoyed the book, but after I heard a lot of people talk about it, it made me think maybe I'm not too happy with it. You know, I don't know, peer pressure influence. We'll talk about that in just a sec. Then as for the books alone, I read seven adult books, two new adult books, which I learned that new adult is when they are anywhere from like college age no, I mean we're going with that seven adult two new adult one middle grade it was supposed to be YA but it, it's basically middle grade and one YA and then I read six standalones and five series one was a continuation of a series two were new series the first two books in each of those series and and then the last little thing is that I only read from one person of color author and it happened to be the one that I DNF'd and I feel really upset about that and I'm I'm kind of judging myself. And then I only read from all women except for one man author for this month. And those are my stats for April. So I want to find some fun way to like do my April wrap up so it's different from everybody else. But I haven't figured that out just yet. So for now, we're just going to do it the way I normally do it. And then maybe as the months go on, I can change it. But let's start with my DNF all the way up to my best five star read of the month. I will say I'm very lenient with like how I grade. Like if I absolutely love a book, like I'll just give it five stars. Like I'm not as like harsh as other people where they're like, oh no, this was only a 4.5. Like I'm not going to give a book of five stars if I didn't genuinely love it. But I feel like I give a lot more five stars than like other people. But like, I don't really care. I'm having a good time reading books that I know I'm going to read or I know I'm going to love. So like, wouldn't we rather that than me just read a bunch of books that I hate? I think so. 
All right, the first book that I, oh, it's not the first, actually, no, I think it is the first book that I read, and it's also the first book that I DNF'd. I read for Kayla, Books and Lala, my favorite, her literally dead book club, and I'm sorry to say, I DNF'd it! And that was All Her Little Secrets by Wanda M. Morris. It was just not for me. And I got to, like, 62% before I DNF'd it. Most people would be like, why did you get to 62%? Why didn't you finish it? I just couldn't finish it, y'all. I just couldn't. I couldn't force myself to do it. So it is a legal thriller. I have learned legal thrillers, not my jam. Didn't care for it at all. I'm not going to go over what these are about because I talked about these books in my like April hopefuls video. So if you want to see what they're about, check it out there. But basically it's just a legal thriller about a girl who's sleeping with her boss and then her boss ends up dead. And then she ends up getting promoted to her boss's position because of course nobody knows that she's sleeping with the boss. And then just all this stuff starts to dig up about her past and like this secret society and like all this other stuff. Anyway, um, they also did flashbacks back to when she was younger, which were supposed to help, I guess, like explain like how she is, what she is, like all this other stuff. And I don't know. I just felt like nothing was really happening. I was extremely bored and I was very, was not about it. Whereas everybody else is really seeming to have enjoyed this. It just wasn't for me. And I just, I couldn't do it. I was listening to it on audio thinking I could just get through it. And I was trying and I just, I couldn't, okay? I just couldn't do it. But it's okay. It's not for me. I'm going to donate it to some lovely little library. Everybody's going to love it there. It's going to be great. So you know what? Someone will end up loving this book. But it just, it didn't do it for me. So there's that. Then we're going to go to my three star read because like I said, I didn't have any one or two stars this month, although that might change with the next book. Um, but my three star read was Gallant by V.E. Schwab. This is my first read or first book by V.E. Schwab. I haven't read anything else yet. I am currently or I'm about to start The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I'm excited for that. And I do have a couple other books of hers. I just haven't gotten to them yet. I read this one pretty much because I requested the audiobook thinking it would take forever. And then it was just like, oh, hey, I'm here after like two days of like requesting it. And so I was like, oh, okay, I'll read it. Plus, I wanted to read it because look at the beauty. That is the special edition cover from Illumicrate. So it was just speaking to me to read it. And also it has like these beautiful pictures all throughout the book. Mm. It's a beautiful book. It was just not a beautiful story. So this one is not bad. It's about a girl named Olivia Pryor. She is completely um she's not deaf she can hear everybody but she can't communicate with anybody so she communicates via sign language and a lot of people don't want to learn sign language for her and she gets an invitation from her uncle she's at this boarding girl school boarding house for girls um and she gets invited to go to her uncle's house and then she gets there and some witchy ghost stuff starts happening and her uncle's dead and like all this other stuff is going on anyway the writing was beautiful. It was haunting. Like, I really loved Olivia as a main character. I loved the representation that they had um, helping her with her ASL and all this other stuff. Like, the way they explained how she can kind of hear what they're saying, but not really. And, like, how she, you know, the struggles of being, like, a deaf um, person was fantastic. The thing that felt flat for me was the story. The story was honestly kind of boring. I didn't really care for the ending. Like it was just kind of like I was hanging on by a thread, but I refused to not finish this because I wanted to finish this book. So I'm very happy that I was able to finish it. I mean, it was perfectly fine. It was just middle of the road. So like three star doesn't mean that I hated it. Three star just means like, eh, it happened. And like, I would recommend it to others. Like it was still a good book. It just didn't really do anything for me. This is the one that I said is supposed to be a YA, but it read like a middle grade. And I don't really read middle grade, but this read a lot younger than I was expecting. Um, and so a lot of people on TikTok are saying that as well, that it is a middle grade read, not a YA read. So just go into that knowing that it reads more middle grade than YA. But still enjoyed it. The next book got 3.5 stars, but after sitting on it a little... And after listening to the wonderful book roast by Gabby and McKay and, oh God, I can't remember the other girl's name on it. There was, there was two others on it. There was two more people or was there just three? I can't remember. But after McKay's book roast and all that, and a couple of other people's book roast, like Katie Colson, I was, oh, it was Katie. I was like, mm, I don't know if this should be a three star. I'm kind of considering dropping it to two star. We will see. And that is Nine Lives by Peter Swanson. Now I've never read a Peter Swanson novel before this. And I honestly, I really liked his writing. Like, I thought it was pretty interesting and it, like, kept me on the whole time. However, I have a bone to pick with this author. 
he ruined and then there were none for me. Ruined it completely. He literally says the whole story and the ending in this book. He ruined it. He ruined it at the Christie's novel. And some people might say, and then there was none, has been out for like 100 years. Does that give this author the right to ruin someone else's book? Not to mention that I heard that his book, Eight Perfect Murders, he ruins eight murder books, eight popular murder books by copying the murders in that book. So he ruins eight books. How is that even okay? How are we in a world where you think that you're hot stuff and that you can ruin other people's books? I'm just saying. So I got a little, I, I, did, I got more than a little mad. I got very mad that he ruined and then there were none for me because I had wanted to read that. And then I learned from others, not only did he tell away the ending of uh, that book, that he stole that book. That this is an exact copy of and then there were none. Basically, even the reveal is the same. Like the reason why the killer did what they did. And to that, I have to go, I don't know about this, fam. I gave it a 3.5 originally because I really liked the writing of it. But what was missing for me was the ending. I thought the ending sucked. I thought it was a stupid ending. It didn't make sense. I kind of saw who the killer was coming before it happened. And I didn't really care for any of the characters specifically outside of like two. And so I had bumped it initially for that. But after all this other stuff and hearing all these other people, honestly, I might have to bump this to like a two star. In fact, I probably am because I'm mad at what he did. And I don't really like when authors just steal other people's ideas. And that's how I feel about this. So I don't know. I had wanted to read Eight Perfect Murders. I own it. But now I'm not going to read it until I find out what books are in that. Although, you know what? I don't even think he deserves the chance for me to read it and read these other eight murders. So I might just say he's an author that I don't buy from again. And that is what that is quite sad. I had read this for Gabby's book trip, so it was a loss for basically everyone on that live. <laughs> Next is my one four-star read that I read, which was A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. I've been meaning to get to this for a while. Um, I did very much enjoy this. It was a pretty good book. Uh, everybody said that I was going to give it a five-star. However, it just kind of fell as a four-star for me. Like, I still loved it. I absolutely recommend it to everybody, but it just wasn't that five-star vibes for me. This is the one that is about a vampire, Constanta, and how she is married to Dracula because Dracula sired her. And then she finds out that she is not the only woman in Dracula's life. He has a couple of other people. And it's basically her story of why she killed Dracula. I mean, that's literally on the first page. It's like, I didn't want to kill you, but I had to. So like, why she killed Dracula. And the number one thing about this is the way that she writes stuff is beautiful. Like, literally beautiful. I'm going to try and just turn to like one page so you can just see, see how it is. Um, so like here, for example, I wanted to dash myself against your rocks like a wave to obliterate my old self and see what rose shining and new from the sea foam. The only words I had to describe you in those early days were plunging cliffside or primordial sea, crystal cold stars or black expanse of sky. I dove down deep into your psyche, turning over every word you gave me like a jewel, looking for meaning, seeking out the mysteries of you. I didn't care if I lost myself in the process. I wanted to be brought by the hand into your world and disappear into your kiss until us two could no longer be told apart. You turned a strong-minded girl into a pulsing wind of need. I never knew the meaning of the word enthralled before you. That's good, beautiful. The way she writes, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I should have annotated this because it had so many beautiful lines and I didn't annotate it. Maybe I'll go back and read it again. Although honestly, I'm probably not gonna read this again. So I'm probably not gonna annotate it. But I thought it was super beautiful. I loved the story. I love the ending. I think it ends fabulously. And so I definitely recommend this. Um, the reason it's considered horror is because it's like vampires and stuff. I don't think it's actually that scary. So it just depends on what you think is scary. And my 4.5 star read was The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. This is one of her newest releases. It's my first Simone St. James book and I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. A lot of other people really loved it too. The only negative review I heard was from one of my favorite booktubers, but I just didn't agree with what she said. So this one is about um, a girl named Beth who in the 70s had gotten arrested for being called the lady killer and having killed two men randomly on the side of the road. She got acquitted and then 30 years later there's a true crime blogger that happens to see her in the doctor's office where she works and she asks if he could interview her and she says yes but you have to interview me at my mansion which is like super haunted and creepy and all this paranormal ghosty stuff starts happening and it's just the story of did she actually do it or not. And I really loved this. I loved the book. I loved the story. I loved how it ended and I loved all the paranormal stuff that happened in it. The only reason I didn't get a five star was because like 
while I enjoyed it, it just didn't have like that, I don't know, that, you know that moment when you're reading and you're like, this is a five star. This is my favorite thing I've ever read. It just didn't have that for me. My son has come into the room, so I'm sorry. I still very much enjoyed this. I love this. I cannot wait to read other books that she has written. Like they are really good. This was just a really great read. I read through it super quick. I listened to it on audio as well. I just loved Beth. She was super creepy. I loved the true crime blogger. She was great. It was just a good read all around. So I highly recommend it. Go read it. I had other four stars. They just weren't physically with me. So I forgot about them. So the next four star that I would say is book two in the Mind, the Mind F series by S.T. Abby. Um, and I guess I'll just talk about the other book now while I'm here because the first book got a five star. The second book got a four star for me. So I'll just talk about both of them right now. So this series, which I'm currently doing a reading vlog on, so I kind of need to get back into the swing and finish books three through five. It's about a girl named Lena, I'm pretty sure. Some terrible tragedy happens to her a couple years back with a bunch of men, and I'm not going to explain what it is. But basically she decides that she's going to seek revenge on them all, and she's going to murder them all ten years later after she's healed and recovered from the entire thing. And so it's like a murder book, but it's also like a romance book. And of course then she starts to like build this relationship with Logan, Detective Logan, who happens to be one of the detectives that's on the case of finding the person that is killing all of these men savagely. And it's pretty brutal. Like the way she kills these people is intense. So if you can't handle that, don't read this book. Um... Everybody, I mean, I'm not going to say this is quality writing because it's not. It's not quality writing. It's it's pretty bad writing. But it's intriguing still. Everybody says you have to get through the first two books to get to the good stuff. But I really liked it from the beginning. So I gave the first book five stars and the second book four stars. And they are both only about 130 pages each, like all of these books. And so they're all basically short novellas. And so I whizzed through the first two books super quick. But yeah, I'm loving this. I'm not going to explain the cover. There is an explanation for it. You got to read the books to figure it out. But I can't wait to read books three through five. So yeah, I loved this. And you will hear an update again probably at the end of May with books three through five. And the other four star book that I had was an audio book that I read called Stuck With You, which is the second novella in the Steam series by Allie Hazelwood, the person that wrote The Love Hypothesis, which I loved. Five star. I read the first book and the second book in this three book novella series. The third book, for some reason, has like a 10 week hold, whereas the other ones had like no hold. Confused by that. Uh, but anyway, so I read Stuck With You and that was the second one and that got a four star for me. And that, so it fall, the three books follow a friend group of Mara, Sadie, and I believe Hannah and their relationship that they build throughout each of these. They each have a scheme job of some sort. I believe in the second one, Sadie is some sort of engineer. I can't remember exactly, but the story about the second one is that Sadie is this engineer and she ends up bumping into this guy at this donut shop and they go out for coffee and they sleep together. They have this one night stand um, and then something happens where she gets really upset with him and decides not to talk to him anymore and they don't talk again for three weeks and then they get stuck in an elevator together for like four hours and it's just a story of like what actually happened, can they move past this, all of that. I gave it a four star only because... I don't love how Allie Hazelwood has been doing this in every single book that she does where she's like, oh, I'm too tiny for you. Like that trope is way overplayed and she did it again in book number three. So uh, book number, well, book number three, because I've read Love Hypothesis, the first uh, novella and the second. And I'm like, I can't, I can't give you a five star for that again. Like get a new trope. <laughs> but other than that, it was really good. I loved it. It was super cute. They're only three and a half hour audiobooks. So I listened to them in like one and a half to two. It was a super quick like drive. Like I listened to it in one drive, one car ride and one car ride back uh, to pick up my son. So yeah, I really loved it. It was a good time. Then let's move on to my final five stars in order of my least favorite five star to my best. My least favorite five star would have been the first one in this Mind F series, but we already talked about it. My next one would have been Under One Roof, which was the first book in the Steam novella series by Allie Hazelwood. I loved this one loved it. It was about Mara and I cannot remember at this current time what she does but basically the her mentor ends up passing away and in her will she gives half of her giant mansion house to her and she realizes she gave the other half to her grandson and they have to live together and of course he's like I don't want you moving in with me and they like are you know grumpy he's grumpy sunshine they hate each other they can't stand being around each other and then slowly they build a relationship and they turn into friends and then she finds out oh I'm in love with him but he probably doesn't love me and that sort of thing the chemistry between them was fabulous the steam for this short little novella was on point I loved the ending I just loved everything about this I loved Mara I loved the way that they interacted her and Liam it was just so cute I recommend it go check it out it was fabulous then the next one I wouldn't say that I loved this one less than these other two but I just 
it's a graphic novel, so I don't want to rank it at the top, even though I loved it so much. And that was the second Heartstopper book by Alice Oseman. I read this because I wanted to make sure that I was ready for the Netflix series, which I believe the Netflix series got, yep, it got right almost, yeah, it finished right at almost the end of this book. So glad that I got to it in time. The Netflix series was life. I have watched it twice. I'm probably going to watch it a third time. It is so stinking cute. The music soundtrack was on point. Everything was on point. It was so good. If you haven't watched it, what are you doing? It was so good. So good. They cast everybody perfectly. It's just so good. So this one was really cute. We're just following Nick and Charlie again in this one. In the last book, I don't want to really just explain what happened. So, I mean, book number two is just following more into them. Like, are they in a relationship? Like, Nick is still trying to figure out, like, is he gay? You know, all the stuff. Anyway, I don't want to ruin it because if you haven't read these, you need to read these. But it's so cute. I mean, the pictures are just beautiful. I just, I just love it. Just love it. Anyway, go read it. I don't want to ruin it for you. So good. And then we have... The one book that I read as an ebook, which I will pop up on the screen, and that is Fool Me Once by Ashley Winstead. I read that in April, and I loved it. I also love Ashley Winstead as a person. She is the coolest person ever, because I did a reading blog where I read In My Dreams I Hold a Knife, which was a five-star read in March, and Fool Me Once, which was a five-star read in April. Her thriller and her romance, how can she write both? I don't know. How can she also have two new thrillers coming on the way already? I don't know. But I did a reading blog on that. I uploaded it, I tagged her in it in my Instagram, and she watched it. She watched the entire thing, and she even said how much she loved it, and she said hi to my dog at the end, which means I know that she watched the whole thing, because my dog was in it at the end. She's fabulous. She's a forever buy, a forever, like, buy author for me. I will always buy her stuff. Like, she is a wonderful person, and I love her so much, and that's probably also why I wanted to give this a five star. I mean, it's a five star read, but still. So, fool me once. I'm not going to explain a lot of it. It's more of a political romance. So it's about a girl that, and I can't remember their names right now because I read it in the beginning of April. So bad. But the main character is trying to get this political campaign to where they can basically make like these cars that are even better than Tesla that save the environment. But she has to get a, punch, a bunch of higher up people to like sign off on it. And so they assign this guy from this other place to come help her. And it happens to be her ex-boyfriend that she kind of was awful to and cheated on in college but there's a reason for that and so it's them having to work together so it's a second chance romance and it's an adorable second chance romance I loved Ben in this he's one of those characters that you would like die for that you want to have as a boyfriend in real life he is just fabulous I loved how he treated her even after she treated him so horribly and I also loved how our main character was one of those characters that you don't necessarily just like she's not perfect like she has her ish she has her stuff she has to fix and like they talk about that and it was really nice to see a main character that's not just perfect and that they actually, you know, do have stuff to work on. And they do have issues that have held them back in relationships. And we're actually going to address them in this book. So it was fabulous. I couldn't recommend it enough. I read it on my nice little Kindle that I just got. I love it. Isn't it adorable? Look at it. Also, it never dies. I've had this for two months and it's still at like 12%. It never dies. I think that's amazing. Anyway, go check it out. It was great. And my top read of the month, which also was the book that triggered me, it was the first book that ever triggered me, which was intense, was Verity by Colleen Hoover. This book is a wild freaking ride. If you have not read this yet, I don't know if you should read it. It depends. It, I would like to say huge trigger warnings on child abuse, like severe child abuse, like that was what triggered it for me because ever since I've had my son anytime that I see in a movie or a book or a tv show that something is happening to a child something bad is happening to a child a child dies like anything like that I freak out because I just think about my son and how devastated I would be if that happened to my son but this one was so much worse because it's parents doing this shit that's all I'm gonna say it's parents doing it and I'm just like how could you hurt your own child how could you do that how could you I just don't know but anyway Severe child abuse. That's what I'll say about that. Um, it also has so much sex in it. Like, so much talk about sex to the point that my best friend messaged me and said, is this sexual stuff going to go away? And I told her, no, it gets worse. And she spanned through it and went, yeah, I'm done. This is too much sex for me. So if you don't want to talk about sex 24-7 and you don't want to read severe child abuse, don't read this. 
but it's about this girl named Loen. She's a struggling writer and she gets hired to ghost write or finish the rest of the series for this popular author named Verity Crawford who happened to get in a coma from a car accident and she can't finish them. And so she moves into their estate with her husband, with Verity's husband and their son. She's supposed to be writing these books, but then she finds a manuscript written by Verity in her office and starts reading it and discovers Verity is crazy. And she's like, should I tell the husband? Should I not? And so there's this whole thing. The thing that everybody talks about in the end though, is that at the very end, there's a letter that you find from Verity too. So there's a manuscript and a letter and they say different things. And everybody's like, should you believe the manuscript or the letter? I am actually team manuscript and letter. I believe that the manuscript was all true and I believe part of the letter was true. So I'm one of those people that voted for both. If you want to know what did the manuscript say? What did the letter say? Come here. I did. Then go check it out because my son just came in so that's all I'm going to say. But I loved this. I did not expect that ending. Like holy moly. This was just a roller coaster from beginning to end. Uh, and it's crazy because I love Colleen Hoover's romance but her thriller like, what was she thinking when she wrote this? Like, what mindset do you have to get in to write a book like this? Like, that is my question. I don't know, but I also have Layla by her, and I'm excited to see if that matches up to this, but I've heard it doesn't, so we'll see. Outside of the couple of books that I read via audio and ebook, these are the books that I read in April. So not a bad stack. I'm happy to say that it is currently March 7th if you're watching this and I've already finished four other books in May so I think we're gonna have a pretty big wrap up in May so that is exciting <laughs> let me know in the comments below which of these books that you have read that you really enjoyed if we have any differing opinions I would love to know I would also love to know in the comments if your team manuscript or letter if you've read Verity but yeah I will see you guys in a video super super soon say bye Lincoln oh come here come here I'll see you in a video super super soon ready say bye Say bye. Bye. All right. Bye, guys.